Hey, it's Sharon here from Content Sparks. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can edit your infographics, you know, infographics that you already have that are, say, brandable, done for you, PLR, whatever term you know, and make them into your colors with your logo, your URL, so that you can either share them with your customers and prospects or share them on social media and drive traffic to your content, your offers, your courses and so on. So here I have an infographic that's from our course called From Prospect to Paying Client. And it's called Can You Turn Your Prospect Into a Client? And this is one of our brandable done for you pieces of content that comes in that package that you can use for attracting students to your course. And you can see the colors are fairly generic. They're not our colors for Content Spark, so that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to start out by making sure that in your design up here in the top left, you have your, say, branded design if you have one, or you create one. So we actually have them set up already in various places. Uh, we've done some different versions, so I'm just going to stick one in that ha that I know has the colors and make sure that the colors are actually there here. Let's take a look over on the right here. Uh, you can see there's a drop down. It says colors and we have ours already set up. Now it hasn't changed anything in the infographic yet because I have to go in and do that individually. So to do that, first I'm just going to do the biggest ones while I have this full size showing. So I'm going to highlight it and you have sometimes you have to move around to make sure you have the right piece highlighted and then go into format. You can see it's already kind of highlighted there because that's what you can work on when you're working on that element. So I click on format and I'm going to click on shape fill and you can see because I picked that design that I'd already set up with my colors, I have them all at the top here ready to go. So I'm going to pick one that's similar to that green. It's our teal color. And now I'm going to want to do that same with everything else that has teal in it. So first I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can go into view and zoom so that I can edit the little individual pieces better. I'll, let's try 66%. Okay, so now I can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to go down. Let's do these bigger ones first again. Again, you might have to move around a little to grab the right piece. And again, into Format and Shape Fill. And same with the other ones and Shape Fill. And then there's this last one, again, Shape Fill. And now let me show you how you can work on these smaller ones because they're actually grouped. So what it is is a piece of, it's a circle, right? And then some text in the middle. And I can't actually just highlight one of those right now. I'll show you what happens. It, try, it fills in both because they're grouped. So you group objects when you want to, let's undo that first, when you want to move them around all together. Whoops, sorry, I picked the wrong one there. So if it's grouped, when I highlight it and just have the one box, I can move the whole thing together. So it has the yes and the color all together. But if I just want to edit the color on one background, then what I'll do is highlight that whole box again, go up to the area that says group. So I'm in format and there's a bit over on the right called group. Click the down arrow and ungroup. So now I have the two separate boxes and I can just highlight the one that I want to do, that circle and fill it. So now it's that teal color, but then I still want to keep it grouped so that I can move it in the future if I want to. So I'll go back to group and click on regroup. And I would do the same with all the others. So say I want the no to be an orange because that's one of our colors instead of the red. Again, if I grab it, the box, and just grab, see if I double clicked on that, it actually highlighted both, but I still wouldn't be able to color just the background because they're grouped together. So you can see that I'm going to grab just the box. And again, it's kind of, sometimes you have to kind of play around to get the, <laughs> the right piece highlighted. So there I've moved just the one, but I'm going to ungroup that again. So ungroup 
and then go and highlight just the box. Sometimes you have to click outside and then go into it again. And this time, actually, there are some preset ones up here on the top. So I'm just going to pick our color for the orange and then go back again to the group and regroup it. So, you know, with something like this, where there are several elements that are grouped like that, it's you have to go through one by one and do that. But a lot of times that's just that's not the case. There weren't there won't be that many that are grouped like that. But it's a really handy feature that grouping and ungrouping if you do create a graphic that has multiple elements in it. So I'm going to stop for a second here and go off and do the rest of these and then show you a couple other things. OK, so now I have colored all the different things with our colors. You can see I did the big background here as well. Um, I see into format. It's the same thing with the shape fill where you could change it and change it into anything else. And you'll even get a little preview as you change things. So I'm going to leave it with our big blue. And now the next thing I'm going to do is go down to the bottom and let's zoom in again for that. And I'll zoom to let's go to 66% um, again. And I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. And you can see I've put in our company name and our logo. So let me just redo that so you can see it from the start. I'm going to erase that. OK, now you'll get your infographics if you get something brandable with a space at the bottom or something that says brought to you by. So the first thing you want to do is put your company name in there. So hang on, I'll do that. And then you want to put in your logo. And to do that, you go up to the top into insert and insert pictures. And you'll get your little dialog box coming up for your website or for your you know, Windows Explorer or whatever it is you're using. And you're just going to go in. I'm going to do it off to the side here and find your logo. Now, one thing I want to show you first before I grab that logo is when we had ours created, I made sure that we had ones that had a black, uh, had, could go on a light background or could go on a dark background. And the difference is that the ones for dark background have the colors of the, anything that's black in a white color. So let me show you that. You can see in the preview here what it would look like with a darker background. So I'm going to pick the PNG file because I want to have a transparent background. I don't want anything solid. And I'm going to insert that. And you can see it kind of inserts it in the middle of the slide. So I'm going to need to make that smaller. Here first, let's move it down. And you might have to scroll a little. And then grab the corner and make it smaller small enough to fit in that space at the bottom. So I might need to make it a little smaller even and just sort of plop it there. OK, and now that is pretty much everything. Um, if you do want some extra room on here, you could adjust the slide size that goes into design. And then over on the right here, there's something called slide size and into custom slide size. So if you wanted to make it a little bit taller, a little bit wider, you can do that. The only thing is it will kind of move things around a bit. So be careful of that because you may end up having to adjust where things are placed. And then finally, when you're all done, obviously you've gone in also and edited any text. So those are in there as well. So that's just you know any kind of type of brandable content you might want to edit the text but when you are done you go into file and you can either export it if you have this version of powerpoint that has that option export it as a pdf which gives it a really nice high quality and you would just publish it and then i you can go back and open it. I'll show you that in a second and see what it looks like. Otherwise, you go into File, Save As, and then you can change the file name here to be either a JPEG image or a PNG image. Let's do the JPEG because that's a little bit smaller size and perfectly fine for sharing on social media. And it'll pop up with this, what's, which slides do you want to export? All slides are just this one. 
We only have one here, but if you had multiple ones with graphics, you could click on all slides and each one would become an image in a folder, separate images. So we'll just click on just this one. It will have saved it and let's go over and take a look at our final images. Okay, so here is the PDF image. You can see it's come out as quite good quality. So that makes a nice printable. And then the other one, the JPEG, is over here. And again, this is a great shareable image here and it has your URL on the bottom. So that's how you would brand the colors and content of one of these brandable infographics. And let me know if you have any questions.